Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are taking a look at the only example to date of a hadrosaur here on the island, the Parasaurolophus. The name Parasaurolophus is a bit of a mouthful and I shall be referring to it as a parasaur for the rest of the talk. Its name means near crested lizard. When it was named by William Parks in 1922, it was thought to be closely related to another crested dinosaur called Saurolophus. However, Saurolophus had a solid crest, whereas the Parasaur has a hollow crest. I'll get into more detail about the crest later. The Parasaur lived in what is now North America during the Late Cretaceous period, about 76.5 to 74.5 million years ago. It could go up to 9.5 metres long and weighed in at around 2.5 tonnes. It was a herbivore that probably foraged for food that grew close to the ground up to a height of about 4 metres. It used its keratinous beak to chop off vegetation and then used its teeth further back in its mouth to grind up its food. Its teeth were continuously replaced and they were packed into dental batteries containing hundreds of teeth which only a few were in use at any one time. While it was foraging for food, the parasaur would have moved on all fours as a quadruped. But if it needed to run, it could move easily on its two back legs as a biped. One of the only animals today to do this is the kangaroo, which hops rather than runs, but you get the point. There have been some interesting fossils of the parasaur found over the years. Some have included skin impressions and show a pebbly texture. One of the most complete fossils ever found was discovered in 2009 in Utah by a California high school student named Kevin Terrace. The specimen turned out to be a baby parasaur, probably less than one year old. It was named Joe. There is a whole website dedicated to Joe. Search for dinosaurjoe.org to learn more about it. Three-dimensional scans of nearly the entire fossil are freely available online, making this the most digitally accessible dinosaur to date. Despite being no more than a year old, the fossilised skull shows signs of a bump on top of its head where the famous crest had started to develop. In adults, this crest can grow up to six feet long. There have been many ideas put forward as to the use for this structure. The most agreed upon being visual display for identifying species and sex, sound amplification for communication and thermoregulation. During the Cretaceous there were several species of hadrosaurs living around the same time and the difference in crest size and shape would help the animals pick out members of their own species. There may have been differences in the sexes with males possibly using the crests as they display to attract a mate. The crest of the parasaur houses tubes that run up from the skull to the tip where they curve around and run back down to the skull. Many paleontologists think that the crest could be used as a resonating chamber, where the calls from the throat of the dinosaur pass through the passages where they are amplified by the crest so that they are louder and have a broader frequency. Because the size and the shape of the crests are usually quite different between species, the different shapes would create different sounding calls, distinct and unique to each species. The third theory of thermoregulation was first proposed in 1978 by P. E. Wheeler. This states that the increased surface area of the crests would cause the dinosaur to lose heat faster. The only problem with this idea is that it's likely that the crests would only have evolved one or two basic shapes. Whatever was the most efficient shape would have become common to all species. It is quite possible, however, that more than one of these theories is correct. After all, there is no reason to assume that a physical feature can only have one purpose. There have also been many other theories which have mostly been discarded. It was thought that it could be a defensive weapon, but it does not seem to be strong enough for that. It was proposed that it was a snorkel, so that the parasaur would not have to lift its head above water to breathe. The big problem with this is the crest is not a tube. It doesn't have a hole at the end, it's just solid bone. One last interesting one is that the crest enhanced the sense of smell. This would be useful if the parasaur specialised in eating hidden plant parts like those below ground. But there is no evidence to suggest that the parasaur did this, i.e. specialised digging hands. A sense of smell might have enabled the parasaur to better detect predators. But predators usually try to approach from downwind of their prey, behaviour that renders the sense of smell next to useless. Predators that may have eaten the parasaur include the large tyrannosaurs like Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus. 
that smaller dinosaurs like the Trudon may well have preyed upon the parasaur too. Well that's all for today's talk and as always I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learned something new. As always if you've enjoyed the video please let me know by leaving a comment and a like and subscribe for more dinosaur talks like this one. I hope to see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.